October the 30th, 2021. Guys, a cool Saturday morning here in central Mississippi. Ground's still wet. It's overcast in the 50s. Just one of the kind of cool, damp days. But uh, we're getting that time of year. We're, we'll be in November here before you know it. But you're looking at space weather, one of the links on our website. There's been a slight change in the CME arrival time. And uh, let me read that to you because just like in the other videos, all we have is the information that the satellites send in and then how that's interpreted into the models. And that's what we use. But what they're saying now, geomagnetic storm warning, NOAA forecasters, say there's an 85% chance of geomagnetic storms today, October 30th, when a CME, described below, and you can see in the blue image, it's the same one we're tracking, is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field. It could be a strong storm, Category G3, which means auroras could descend to mid-latitudes like Kansas, Nebraska, or Oregon, Virginia. The CME's arrival time is now, they're saying, uncertain. Estimates range from midday to day, October 30th. It was actually at 1,600 hours on the chart from yesterday, which would have been 10 a.m. on the East Coast. But it's saying the uh, it's uncertain estimates range from midday to day to the early hours of October 31st. Subscribers to our Space Weather Alert Service, which they have, and you can subscribe to it. It's a few dollars a month. I can't remember what it is. But you can get a text message when the CME strikes. And what they're going to be doing is uh, you can take the Earth's magnetic field and ground currents and all that can be checked and tested. There's monitors that do that. But there's an early detection um, that you can use also, and it's the one I use. And it gives the Earth anywhere from a 30 to 45-minute uh, alarm. In other words, as it crosses the Discover satellite, that's between the Earth and the Sun, then we get that information fast. And here in the top corner, guys, let me zoom this up just a little. I know on the phone it would be hard to see. Here in the top corner, current conditions right there, and it says solar wind. Notice that speed is at 327. That's average kilometers per second. Density is thick, though. The protons, which are measured in centimeters cubed, are at 25. Usually, that you know, that's floating below 10. So we're seeing that start to build up, but click on Discover, D-S-C-O-V-R, right there. Now, this is going to take you uh, to a chart on a page that you have all seen many times in my videos. And uh, what's interesting about it to me is that so many people will try to debunk the effect of solar flares and CMEs on Earth's weather, volcanoes, earthquakes, the entire nine yards. And we would not be here without God placing this planet at exactly the point to where we don't freeze to death or overheat. You wouldn't want to be on Mercury. You wouldn't want to be on Mars on the opposite end of that. But uh, in the perfect balance, that's where he has us. 1 AU, 93 million miles from the sun. And uh, it takes, the, by the way, the speed of light, which is in the photon burst that ionizes our atmosphere uh, when these events happen, travel, it travels at um, the speed of light. Again, it takes it only 8.2 minutes to reach go 93 million miles it's um humans try to comprehend that and it's really hard to do if you think about it but one of the things about this notice who runs this page it's space weather prediction but it's by the national weather service in NOAA. so uh, you can just reply to people that try to debunk this type of information to say if it's not important to the weather on the planet and the other effects why does the national weather service sponsor this page and cover it and put information into it anyway if you scroll down you can see this is a three-day report and what we're dealing with in the gold line is the density of the protons and again they are a little high they're usually around here about 2.83 see this 3.5 that's cu centimeters cubed now you're dealing with 20 24 it's picking up Solar wind speed is, has not picked up yet. And this is how you tell. Remember, it's supposed to come in at around 800 and kil uh, kilometers per second, 1.8 million miles an hour. But it's still at about 326 kilometers per second, which is not far above average at all. So this is how you can tell. Usually in, in the green line right here will stay with the purple line, and that's because this is the temperature 
of this incoming uh, solar cloud, if you want to call it that. And uh, it will, as the speed increases, the temperature increases, and normally at that point, the proton density will start to decrease because once that is the faster the wind, the less particles per cubic meter. So that's what we're dealing with. It's still looking good here, and we're looking at it live, which you can do too. But if you're interested, again, follow the links. I just wanted to put this in there because until this morning, they had pretty much um, stayed with the timing. You saw the models of uh, around noon today. Just depend, you know, it's a seven hour plus or minus window is what they tell us. So now they're looking at from now until sometimes after midnight on the 30, uh, 31st early in the morning we're watching guys but this is how you can watch it it's a heads up be safe